welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome my name is Zoe but most people know me as ZA Reptiles here on YouTube and on Instagram and this is Zero my milk snake he is in shed right now which is why he's not super bright red he's kind of more of like a bluish purple kind of um but yeah he's in shed right now like deep in blue his eyes are blue and everything but anyway Today is the day we're doing one of the upgrades I have been talking about and wanting to do forever now, like over a year. So there's been two upgrades in my life that I've been wanting to do so badly. And that's build a four by two by two for Crikey, my jeweled Lacerda, and to get Zero here into a 40 gallon breeder Exoterra. And today we are finally doing Zero. You know, Crikey's is done, that's one off the list. Today we're doing zeros and I'm so excited. So a couple notes before we get into the video. I do want to apologize for the quality of the video. I, because we're doing all of these upgrades right now, I don't have all my filming stuff set up. I'm not using a tripod, I'm filming on my phone. So quality could be better. But we're doing a bunch of upgrades, so who cares? <laughs> he is not an easy snake to hold with one hand. He moves a lot. So this is quite the challenge. Secondly, I want to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to Custom Reptile Habitats for actually sending me a kit for Zero for his new enclosure. So as you guys know, all of the upgrades I've been doing, I've been making the backgrounds for, and I am burnt out. I am so sick of making backgrounds, and my rock backgrounds, they're like not quite as naturalistic as I want. They look good, I think they look good, but they just don't look quite as natural as I want. Like I want it to look like a real rock. So I thought I would just purchase the background from Custom Reptile Habitats. I've had my eye on one for a while. Um, so you know, I just, I talked to them about it and they offered to send me a kit. So they sent me the 40 gallon Exoterra Snake Discovery Kit. So not just the background, the whole kit with the artificial ferns, um, a rock that I ended up turning into a hide, I cut a little hole in it, and a little dish that I actually didn't use for this enclosure. I'm gonna use it for a different enclosure um, because he has a really big water dish that he can soak in. So I'm gonna use that one for someone else. I actually think I already know who I'm gonna use it for. So after installing the background, seeing how I liked it, I determined that I I am obsessed. I love these backgrounds. Installing it was so easy. I think it looks so good. So I actually now have an affiliate link for them in the description below. So if you want to go check them out and purchase a kit for yourself or even just a background, hold on zeros slithering away. Anyway, if you guys after watching this video decide you want to go check them out, if you use my link in the description, I will get a small commission off of whatever you guys purchase so it's very helpful help support me and my babies um, all these new upgrades and I actually have a couple of vet appointments coming up so anytime I make any money off of any commissions affiliates anything that has to do with my reptiles Etsy all of that it all goes directly back into my animals care so I very much appreciate all of you that do use my codes in my links so yeah, I did get this back in for free. I absolutely, absolutely love it. So thank you so much to Custom Reptile Habitats. Their link will be in the description below and it will be an affiliate link. And let's get into building his bioactive. Okay, so this enclosure was Cusco's old enclosure. So I've got to hose it out and clean it real good. So here's my box from Custom Reptile Habitats. I was so, so excited to unbox all this stuff. It was like Christmas in September and it was just, it was so exciting. Okay, so here's the background. How freaking awesome is that? So cool, so naturalistic, I'm obsessed. And then we've got some rocks for the side and we've got a rock for the bottom that I cut a hole into and made into a hide. Our ferns that they sent and some silicone and a little food dish.
So odds are you're gonna have to trim the sides of the background a little bit to make it fit. Um, so this is me just testing it to see how much I need to trim off the sides. You can use sandpaper or just like a knife. I started out with sandpaper, but um, it would have taken a while. So I ended up using a box cutter and just shaving off the sides until it fit inside. This is in there pretty snug. So I don't think I'm going to silicone it. So pretty. Okay, so now I'm just turning the enclosure on its side so I can attach the first side rock section. Um, so the reason I'm doing this in my living room is because I am using silicone to attach the sides. So you don't want to do that in the room with your animals because it does release some fumes and it can be kind of smelly. Okay, so later that night, I turned it around and I attached the rock to the other side. Same process, put some silicone on it, press it down, and then I left it overnight. Okay, so next day, it's all done and siliconed. Right now, I'm just adding some black paper to the sides. I want to get like some naturalistic looking scrapbook paper to put on the sides, but the closest craft stores in Canada, and obviously with the pandemic, I can't go there right now. So I'm taking a page from the Snake Discovery book and putting some black paper on the sides for now. Can I just say, the real reason I work out is so I can carry enclosures by myself up and down the stairs. <sighs> okay, now that my strong self got it up here, this is what it looks like. I'm so excited to get this all set up. So now that we've got our heat mat and thermostat set up, we can put in our substrate. So we are going bioactive for him. So I'm going to do a mix of topsoil and play sand. Um, so that'd be like the main components of it. And we'll go from there. I'm sorry if this quality isn't very good. I'm working with my phone as opposed to my camera, um, which ended up being a mistake, obviously, because now I have to hold my phone. Uh, my camera tripod is at work. So, or my uh, phone tripod's at work. So we're working with what we've got. So I've got my bag of Scott's Organic Topsoil. You can get this right at Home Depot. All right, so we've got our organic topsoil in. Now we're gonna add our play sand. Again, right at Home Depot. Okay, so this is all I'm doing for right now because I do have a bag of Repta Chip coming in today that I wanna mix into it. Um, so I have to wait for UPS to get here with that, and then we'll continue. Okay, so we finally got in some of our Repta Chip, and now we're going to add plants. So I've got a lot of options for plants. I don't really know what exactly I'm using. I've got some stuff here. I've got some stuff up there. I've got plants kind of everywhere to use for enclosures, so I guess I'm just going to put stuff in and see what looks good. Okay, so before I put in too many plants, I want to make sure that I've got as high as everything where I want them. So this is the rock that they sent with the kit. All I did was cut a hole in it because it's nice and hollow. So I cut a hole to make it a hide. So that's the warm hide. And then I've got this rock hide over here. I can put it back on. And I thought that kind of matched the background a little bit. So it works. And then I've got this water dish. So make sure everything's where I want it so that I can then put in plants. Okay, so I also just added some of this driftwood. Um, I like to add wood in because, you know, it gives them something to climb on. It utilizes kind of the vertical space a little bit more. And again, it's something natural. So I had these two pieces laying around. So, yeah. Okay, we've got some plants in. So back here, I've got a bird's nest fern. I've got spider plant in the back, spider plant up here, and then these fake ferns that they sent me. Um, just for an extra pop, I figured it'd be good to put in the middle because should you come around the middle or need to change water or move sticks, something that's not live would probably be best in the middle because it's probably going to get messed with a lot. So that is what it looks like. 
So before I put zero in, I have to clean his water bowl and fill it and uh, put a lid on. And of course, to make it bioactive, you need some isopods. So I'm going to throw in some oranges. Maybe a couple more. And my springtails. Ready? Go check out your new enclosure. Where are you going? Right under the dirt. Seriously? The one plant that's not in a pot, and that's where you go. Okay, so honestly, I really love my new ones that I built, but I think Zero's enclosure became one of my favorites. Just look how natural that background is. I love the rocks on the sides. I am obsessed with this enclosure. Oh, I do want to add, he will have leaf litter for the cleanup crew. I'm just completely out of leaf litter right now, so I'm making all my bioactives without it. Um, we're pretty much into fall, so soon we'll have some leaves dropping and I'll start collecting leaf litter again. But in the meantime, no leaf litter. So I didn't have these lights plugged in before. I like just did it to light up these enclosures. And Phoenix is like, what is going on? Right, guys so that is his new enclosure let me know what you think in the comments let me know if you've ever used custom reptile habitats let me know if you think you're going to i highly recommend it because it looks so natural it's so easy to install i'm going to drop you for anyone wondering what's like to own a milk snake that's basically it constantly having to use two hands Anyway, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed and you want to see all of the upgrades we're working on because I still have a ton left for this year. And as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you for the next video. Bye!